Welcome on back to Skippers. Today we are doing some buy low, sell high players for fantasy baseball. Today's video brought to you by SoRare MLB. Subscribe, join the Discord, let's get into the players. First buy low is going to be Nestor Cortez of the Yankees. So far this season, 4-2 of 530 ERA. 54 and a third innings pitch. He has 53 strikeouts and a whip of 127. My first look through the expected stats had me land on our old pal Nestor Cortez. Right now, his actual ERA, 530 like I said. His expected ERA sits near Nearly two runs lower at 3.69. His actual batting average against is 255, while his expected batting average against is 223. Woba against of 334, expected Woba a very good 302. Things haven't really changed much from Nestor's great year, but he just seems to be super unlucky uh, compared to his batting average of balls in play at only 232 last year. So maybe last year was the outlier where the numbers were insanely good, but Yankee Stadium has seemed to have uh, bitten back pretty hard at his home run to fly ball rates. Up four points from last year in his 1.95 ERA at home last season does not even come close to compare uh, at the bad 4.86 ERA he has at home right now. Nestor has really struggled getting through the third time of an order. I, as a Jays fan, it was kind of the Ross Stripling effect. It's like, okay, it's going to go through two times, and then the third time we need to find either be up a lot so we can damage control, or we got to go to the pen. He has a two point, no, not even two point, a 23.76 ERA, a 1500 OPS against, and weighted on base average against of 619 the third time through the order. But now we need to find reasons as to why we want to be buying Nestor. Mr. Cortez. His four-seam fastball has the exact same expected batting average as last season, and that pitch had a run value of negative 22. Doesn't really compare this season. I believe it's positive to run value for his four-seamer, but the metrics really haven't changed at all. Um, the slug between the two years on the four-seam fastball, this season is 140 points worse, and his expected slug is 100 points lower than his actual so far this season. I think he's getting super unlucky um, against the fastball, which is by far his best pitch leading to these high inflated numbers for Nestor Cortez. Again, there's no change on the shape. There's no loss of velocity. Um, I think he's just probably more over the heart of the complaint compared to uh, last season. He's also stranding runners at a horrible rate. 67% left on base rate, where his career average is 78%. So I think some positive regression is absolutely due there. I don't want to give up a stud to get Nestor Cortez, but if you're going to throw out a feeler to your league mates to see where their heads are at with Nestor Cortez, I think it is worth a shot. I don't think he's going to pitch this poorly for the rest of the season. And that starts tonight against Seattle. My sell high is going to be Marcus Stroman of the Cubs. He's 5-4. and four. 259 ERA. He's pitched 73 innings. He only has 62 strikeouts, but a whip below one at 0.99. Marcus Stroman has been very lucky this season. He has an incredibly low batting average of balls in play at only 226. His ERA again is 259. Expected ERA, a run and a half worse at 402. FIP, still pretty good for him. Uh, 355 in his XFIP, a little bit worse at 3.64. Mark Stroman has somehow been a merchant at limiting barrels while still giving up a solid amount of hard contact. Over his last three starts, Marcus Stroman has pitched 23 innings and only given up three earned runs. So I think this is the perfect time to be selling high on the Stro show. Although he isn't a big strikeout guy, Stroman is running the best K percentage of his career at 21.9%, but he's also running the highest walk rate of his career at 8.5%. He's been able to run a low barrel percentage against and the average exit velocity against is the second highest of any year of his career. From the heat maps, Marcus Stroman has been just living on the corners of the plate and his misses don't seem to be middle-middle, which have helped him limit damage. I don't think Marcus Stroman has reinvented himself in any way that this 2-5 ERA is going to sustain itself over his last, say, 18 starts if he's totally healthy. I'd be looking for a higher-end arm that's kind of um, underperformed to this point to be a centerpiece of my rotation for the playoff push as I don't think Marcus Stroman is a under three ERA pitcher for the rest of the season. This is the best Strowman you're going to get this year. These three starts included. I think it is a perfect time to sell high. Someone who seems desperate for pitching. As you heard at the top of the show, we are doing a private contest on So Rare, where you guys get to compete against me, take all your cards, take all your players, where you can sign up for free and get some great prizes. But this great prize on So Rare for the private contest is a free subscription to MLB TV for the winner. If you don't like watching all the MLB games that are out of market for free from the comfort of your own home you are crazy so do not forget to join so rare sign up it is absolutely free 
Join the private contest for this upcoming game week. And again, the winner gets to win an MLB TV subscription. So I'll see you guys on So Rare MLB. And finally, the last one, it's going to be a buy low on Michael Harris, the second of the Braves so far this year to 175 average, two home runs, eight runs batted in, five stolen bags, and an OPS of 531. Michael Harris's sophomore season has been absolutely derailed by injuries. And at this point, I feel like fantasy managers want nothing to do with him. In my 14-team league, someone dropped him this week. He's had two back injuries and a leg injury that has stopped all the momentum he built up from his rookie of the year campaign. And the numbers look incredibly awful for a guy who was going late in the second round. But if you're looking for injury replacements, or even if he's on your wire, like he is in my league, I think you should take a solid flyer on Michael Harris the second. He is not going to be very expensive to acquire, or if you need to spend some fab on him, you don't want to do too much because people are not in on Michael Harris at this point. He has been shockingly bad against fastballs this year, which to me, again, shocked, surprised here. Last year, Harris hit 342 against fastballs, and this year, he's hitting 152. He's been good against sliders, which is a good sign, in my opinion. He doesn't seem to be overmatched by the way pitchers have pitched against him. Maybe it's just been a tough time handling Velo again. He's hitting 250 against sliders this season. His line drive percentage is down six points from last year. The numbers on the surface are absolutely not good. No good at all. But the stack has page for max exit velocity, hard hit percentage, and barrel percentage are very similar to last season. I think uh, Michael Harris can find a way to salvage the season, but maybe not the stat line. If you need a wave wire bat or you're looking for an upgrade in the outfield, I think Michael Harris isn't the worst look of all time. There it is, three players, two that I'm trying to buy low on and one that I'm going to sell high on. Let me know what you guys think of the players. Thank you so rare for sponsoring the video. Subscribe, join the Discord, and I will see you guys later.